Hello everyone, we're nearly done. Uh, myself, Paddy Davids here, he's hanging on in there. We're by uh, Johnny Haynes statue. The legend. Legend indeed. Uh, it is a fine ground craven cottage, wonderful architecture. That's about as partridge as I'm going to get today. Uh, Dave's doing the cameraman work and we'll have a word with Dave. Dave, let us know the comments if any comments come through. Shout them out. Do your best. Of course you will. Top man. Um, it's been fun with the three of us turning around all our match uh, content. And fortunately, we had a point to talk about, which I have to say, on 87 minutes, I wasn't really convinced was going to happen, Pad. No, no. I think, I think I'd agree. I was probably in the same boat. But um, that guy at half-time who came down, he forecast it right, didn't he? Was it a Norwich fan? It was, yes. Mr. Fuller, I can remember. Big fans, uh, big mates with Ian Clark. If you're watching Clarkey, uh, Mr. Fuller sends, sends his regards. And he did come down at half time and say 1 1. He told me to smile more as well. Are you going to do that now? On these videos. Well, no. No. <laughs> no. I, was, I, want to see, I want to see a winner, you know. I mean, that's how many and counting now. I'm beating in two here now, Pad. There is that. There is that. And, um, and that could be the biggest legacy coming out of this because. They really had to go to the well, you know, for a new set of players, new head coach, against a very good Fulham side. You know, games like that last season, without getting too carried away, they probably would have got beat and it would have been two or three rather than, you know, one nil, one nil, and then they grab something. So all I'm going to say is if that is what we're going to see from a Farker Norwich side, then, then there's going to be more of these away from home type of grinding out results because that's what they did today. I mean, they had plenty of chances, didn't they? But... Um, yeah. You know, they didn't take them, and when you don't take them, then against a team as good as Fulham here on their own patch, it's going to be a struggle, and uh, it was. But uh, a certain Portuguese individual yeah. came to the party. Yeah, OK, so I've got th three things. Let's do, let's do Nelson first, shall we? He uh, got very excited, um, made sure very the manager excited. knew that uh, he should be starting. I've, I've just done a video saying, well, that's great, you want to see that, but um, what do you think? No, I think it was a bit over the top. I've seen it back on the TV now as well. I mean, uh, fair enough, you know, he's, he's unhappy that he's not starting um, and he's expressed that. But it was almost like after Farming, mean, you see the pictures, Farker's basically tried to embrace him with a kiss and he's like shrugged him off and he still wants to go at it. He's still throwing his shirt in the face of his manager slash head coach. Um, don't like to see that at all. I can understand his frustration. Well, if you were in his shoes, of course you want to play, but I think it might have just... Uh, been a bit too far for my liking but uh, you know there's no doubt in the man's ability he's a fantastic footballer but there's a reason he's not playing at the top end of the Premier League and maybe that's something to do with his temperament and we saw a snapshot of that in the goal celebration um, and that's really for Farkin out he's going to have to manage manage him as he manages all his players to get the best out of him but um, certainly it worked in the sense that when he came on he was an angry man and you could see that in his 20 minute cameo and uh no doubt in the man's ability fine finish wonderful pass from Wes Hulan yes. um, but the chest control the composure which would sadly lack him from one or two of his teammates uh, before he, he entered the fray so yeah okay yeah. he's frustrated we understand it but I think I think probably Monday if he was to see that again and he's calmed down a bit he'd think he'd, he overstepped the mark a little bit but the manager who's the only one who really matters probably he, uh, he brushed it off spoke to him after the game post-match and he basically drew a parallel with his own career. I think he was a striker in his playing days and said uh, there were times when he was frustrated and angry with his coach. He said he, there was one occasion he'd thrown his shirt, not just taking it off, but throwing it down at his coach's feet. So, you know, it's it's kind of the boots on the other foot for him. So I don't think he'll I don't think he'll place too much context by that. But if you're asking me, would I like to see that? No, I don't. I don't like to see that at all. No, spot on. Um, it's true. It was just sort of seemed maybe slightly the wrong wrong side of the line. Uh, a lot of chances that Norwich did miss um, because it could have been like three-three at half time. Yeah. Uh, most of them falling to Marley Watkins. Not all of them, but but most of them. I mean, one in the second half where he just kind of side-footed it to David Button. A shame, really. Yeah, well, this is. I mean, it was. I said. I think after about twenty minutes, it was just bizarre in terms of they'd been pummeled yet they'd had the best chances, and that kind of theme continued right through. Um, Yannick Wiltshire three or four times got the wrong side of Sessignon, cut it back. Watkins, yeah, a couple of chances. I think Vrancic had a chance. Madison, um, and for Watkins, particularly frustrating because th this day last week he's absolutely larruped one into the top corner from top 20, 25 yards and just didn't have enough composure. Maybe he had too much time, you know, because on both those occasions he could see the ball coming towards him. He knew what he wanted to do and he just wasn't able to execute it. Whereas that was more instinctive against Brighton, but 
yeah, if you take the positives out, then Norwich showed that they could create chances against a very good team on their own patch. So, so that's a positive, but you'd, you'd hope they'd be a bit more uh, clinical in the final third moving forward. Yeah, and, and maybe not as open. I mean, they started off with three at the back and, and in behind the fullbacks, there were acres really, and that caused yeah. Norwich massive problems until they changed it probably with about 10 minutes of the first half remaining. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was more or less uh, an acceptance, I think, that it wasn't working with the three. There wasn't getting really a lot of protection from, from the Norwich midfield and... Um, Zimmerman and, and F- F- uh, Franca, sorry, must have thought, what are we let ourselves in for here? Because um, they were they were proper being forced to, you know, go one on one, and you really shouldn't need to to have that amount of one on one duels in your final third. Really, if you, if you are, then there's something not quite right with the organisation. And as I say, he changed it, it, went with a bit more solid forward, didn't he? And uh, and they were better for it thereafter, albeit still looked a bit vulnerable on the counter. But early early days, work in progress. So. You know, I'm sure he will get that right because he strikes me as a very astute, tactical type of coach. Yeah, certainly very promising. And the, the one thing I did just want to bring up, and you kind of touched it on the very start, this time last season, I felt it when Norwich went, I got, oh, it's very jazzy. What are you doing there, Dave? Look at that. Johnny top camera. Well. Johnny Hay, there he is. Top camera work. Uh, one of the things I picked up on that you said earlier at the start, uh, when Norwich went a goal down, they were under some serious pressure after that. Yeah. And I felt the sinking feeling of last season, well, they'll concede to no one here. And that ability to dig in yeah. is possibly one of, the, one of the big positives because that's what got them the point in the end. The fact they didn't suddenly go 2-0 down at, at any point. And yeah. obviously, uh, Fulham struck the post, so there's a little bit of luck in there too. Yeah, there was, but you, you kind of ride your luck, don't you? When, you, when you? Certainly when you go away from home to one of the better sides in the division because you know they're going to have pressure. You know, you know you're going to be put under the, the pump and it's how do you respond both individually and collectively. And you're right, far, far too often the, the default was uh, the white flag went raised and... Um, and they imploded and we, we saw the amount of goals they, they leaked away from home it was an alarming amount of concessions but as I say it's we can't make any real hard and fast 90 minute assessments on, on what we've seen today but I just kept coming into my head that all we've heard through the summer is Farker and Weber to a lesser extent talking about togetherness fighting spirit there'll be adversity they'll be even said on Friday Farker to a sur- Thursday sorry even in the 90 minutes here you'd, you'd face adversity well he got that spot on and yet they found a way. And and if that DNA, if that gene is in this group of players, then that's that's a good sign moving forward. You know, whether they've still got enough to be fighting it out with a Fulham at the top end, time will tell. Obviously there's a lot of injured lads still unavailable today. Wes and Pinto didn't really apart from Wes's little cameo didn't really come into his thinking. So you know, there's there's something to build on today. And it, it's more it's more the manner of how they've got the result rather than how they've actually played, I think, because uh you know, there was things that they needed to tighten up on considerably, but overall, you take a point here all day long, won't we, before the game? So yes. um, certainly, the manner they've earned it as well. All in all, positives. Uh, just a, a really quick one in terms of the goal offside. Slavica Jakanovic was convinced. What did you think? Yeah, he's not. He wasn't happy. Yeah, and he continued to keep going on about it. But to give him his due, I'd imagine he's probably not since the final whistle to face in the media. He probably hadn't seen it, other than in real time and. By all accounts, people contacted me on social media. Tim Ream was more or less just just about playing Olivera on. So I think TV replays would, would suggest Jukanovic might need to revise his, his opinion. <laughs> you know, and the skipper's own goal? Unfortunate or poor defending? Poor defending, really. Wil- Wiltshire got isolated and uh, kind of showed why he isn't a defensive-minded wing-back, didn't he? he? He got beaten too easily and then Martin's got to come across and then there's just the unfortunate element is that it's just clipped him and it's wrong-footed guns. So. But you know, you stop that at source. If if Wiltshire does his job right, then that ball doesn't come in. So it's a shame because I thought it was positives again from Yannick. I mean, that was Going Yannick's forward. performance. Yeah, was almost symptomatic of the team as a whole. Really, there was some bright sparks, but also a little one or two concerning elements. But you know, hey, it's the first game of the season, so it's going to take time. It is uh, much like our trips back. So I reckon we get on with them, shall we? Let's do it, mate. Pleasure, Pad. Uh, pleasure, Dave. Do we get any comments? Anything you want to bring up, Dave? Say something. Uh, I thought Zimmerman was was good. Husband's got up his game. Rancic similarly, but I'd not bothered at all about Oliveira celebrating like that as long as he scores the goals. And you can imagine Dave's face while he was saying that—a big, big, big grin on his face. Right, let's go home, shall we? Uh, thanks all for watching. Don't forget uh, Sunday, Pinkin.com. All the more uh, analysis you could ever wish to see uh, will all be there. And then uh, we do it all again from Monday for the cup. We will. We will. We will. Uh, Thanks all for watching. Dave, you can turn us off. Bye.